simulated racing can be awesome, but it can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was always fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos or danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all will be kept in the pits. Not to mention that with members in over 130 countries already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series and work your way up to one of seven world championships offering over half a million dollars in prize money. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. Welcome in here tonight, race fans, for the first time ever. The Checker Flag Auto Supply Short Track Scrambler Series here for Red Light Racing are right here at the Slinger Speedway. One fourth of a mile. You thought last week at Oxford was pretty exciting with, well, my man Al Smith behind the microphone tonight. Well, myself. I'm back here with the Red Light Racing Series. Glad to be back, but I got to thank Al and I got to thank all the racers last week for the well wishes on my little bit of a trip to see one of our Red Light Racers, well, get married in Indianapolis and Gold Day. We wish him a congratulations and, well, it was a beautiful wedding there in Indiana. But I'm back here tonight behind the microphone for these drivers and I can tell you, I looked at the points championship coming into the night and it's still tight at the top tight as in just two points between max terriel and michael trevarthan do you know who is sitting just 21 points back that is joshua buckley and eric stout those two drivers are just sitting there 21 points back behind the top spot in the championship standings rounding out the top five in the championship standings coming into the night that is dave bragg he's 27 points back so a lot of these drivers within striking distance here in the seventh race of the season. And like I said, it's Slinger. It's the fastest one fourth mile, and it's the first time we've ever been here. So it looks like 17 drivers have made their way here tonight to Slinger to try and, well, pick up a victory. So we will see here in just a couple of laps. They tell me this track is one of the hardest that they have ever raced on. And well, with it being a brand new track here on iRacing, I definitely believe it. What do you say, though, as you see the iRacing.com pace car down on the front straight away here? The cars are going to start to populate. Let's take you through that starting lineup here tonight, brought to us by our friends over at Six Rings Racing. 17 cars, and they line up like this here tonight, starting on the pole here tonight. The Storm from the North, car number 42. That'll be Max Terriol. To the outside of him, the driver that's picked up two wins this past season, that'll be car number one of Dalton Williamson. Then in car number 17, starting to the second row inside, car number 17, third position tonight, that'll be Chad Allcares. Michael Trevarthen, it's the number two machine. He'll start P number four. The double V entry, the Bragg Racing Jiffy Loop Switch Tire, number 53, the double V of Victor Valls will roll from fifth here tonight. And all the way out of Massachusetts, the 4X Racing number 11, Shanika Single, they call him Sean Single, car number 11 will roll from sixth. The driver out of South Carolina, the full throttle racing entry. That'll be Richard Murdoch. He'll roll from 7th in car number 1. All the way back into the 8th spot. Well, hailing out with another one of those Carolina boys. Car number 62. That'll be TJ Henson. He'll go from 8th here tonight. Driver north of the border. Driver the Canadian Invasion Posse. Number 31. That'll be Dave Bragg. And how about the driver from out west? It's going to be the Wild Wild West Bill in car number 21. Bill Gross in car number 21 starting 10th. Starting back into the 11th spot here tonight, be car number 81. That'll be 
Ken Allen. And how about the old Granny Hams, Walkers and Canes, number 13, M.A. Joshua Buckley will go from 12th here tonight. 13th on the call. Well, it's the Feeney call, number 38 of Brandon Feeney. And that'll be Chris Oliver there in car number 52. He'll go from 14th. 15th will be Brian Bianchi, Rob Higgins, and Bob Higgins rounding out the Six Rings Racing starting lineup. You see him out there. Yeah, here I'm down the back straight away. 100 laps. Going to go green right here, right now. Max Terriel going to lead us to the green flag tonight. See who has what. Lap number one will go to Max Terriel with Dalton Williamson across the line right behind him. That'll be Michael Trevarthen. First battle that side by side. Shanika single to the outside in car number 11. Then it's Victor Valls right there side by side. Murdoch and Henson also running side by side just behind this battle. There's the captain crunch number 11 of Shanika single. See if he can work his way through the field here tonight. Everybody going single file here trying to see if they can get some laps run. Here comes the number 31, the Jiffy Lube Switch tire entry. He'll dive it down to the inside on Richard Murdoch. Both drivers playing pretty nice there. You would have thought some contact maybe early on in this one tonight. You see the sparks flying from out underneath Richard Murdoch's car as they work through the corners here. We don't have much track data history here at the Slinger Speedway, so what are we going to see side-by-side -side battles all night long? We're, we're hopefully looking forward to that, seeing if that outside lane will come in. The dynamic track we've seen on short tracks here this season have been there, so will we be able to get these drivers to be able to run side-by-side? -side? Right now we do. Side-by-side -side is back here for that... 7th and 8th position of Bragg to the inside of Richard Murdoch. It's the only side-by-side -side battle here on the Speedway. Come by this time. They're going to put 9 laps officially into the books here tonight at the Slinger Speedway. As you see the 31 of Bragg looking like he's going to be able to take full control there of that 7th position. Murdoch to the outside. Got a little tight that time off turn number 4 for Richard Murdoch. That's going to allow the number 62, T.J. Henson right there. The solid rock carriers contact between Murdoch and T.J. Henson. Henson able to hang on to him, but now he's going to lose the battle, and he'll fall back into the clutches there at card number 21. That'll be Bill Gross. A little sideways that time, down to the turn three and out of turn four, and a little kiss of the outside wall. The 21, the Magoni Setup Shop LLC, number 21 of Bill Gross, got into the outside wall, and now he lost about a half a car, like maybe call it a car like now. It's, oh, he'll get the wall again out of turn four, but so does T.J. Henson, car number 62. So as these drivers continue to battle back here, one driver that's not having a good attempt here tonight. Car number 14, M.A. of the Cold Peppers Bakery and Cafe. Number 14, M.A. of Brian Bianchi. Looks like his 14 not moving quite into the right direction here in the early stages of this one. He's sort of back into the 15th spot. He's running currently into the 15th spot. So everybody has now found their running home. These two drivers have checked out to a two-second race lead, and they are about to call a half a straightaway, maybe, till they're going to be into the lap traffic here tonight. It's only 17 cars, but look at it. We're not even a quarter way into this one tonight at Slinger. And with the pace the two race leaders are running, they are bearing down on the back end of the field. And that 17th place runner, the checkered flag, almost blind number 30 of Bob Higgins is currently on the hot seat. There's Bob, and there is Max Terriel. Half a straightaway, that's the distance. 20 laps this time by when they come through will be into the books. Battle back here, that is Ken Allen to the outside. There comes Brandon Feeney, card number 38. Had the opportunity last week to uh, sit down with Brandon Feeney before I headed out on my road trip. Got to listen to the Feeney Call podcast as well. Yours truly was sitting there talking to Brandon Feeney. Got to talk about a lot between the broadcasting side of uh, things here with high racing and the real world side. And how I got my start behind this wonderful microphone here. Has a lot of races, a lot of miles, a lot of drivers behind it. A lot of them coming right here through the red light racing ranks. 
Zero one of Richard Murdoch is still getting hounded by the number 21. Just behind them though, Feeney back to the inside here on the 62 as they work down the back straight away. Feeney's number 38 bottoming out that time down to three and four. But he's gonna be able to complete the pass. As he completes that pass out and ahead of them, it's still Richard Murdoch and he's working the outside groove again. He works the outside groove, but Bill Ross down to the bottom side. A lot of banking here to try to keep the momentum up in the corners for these drivers. Eleven and a half second lap times is what these drivers had at the opening stint of this race. Now here we're 26 laps into the books. They've lost, oh man, three quarters of a second off their fast times. So the tires here tonight going pretty much like a cheese grater. So Richard Murdoch, he is out here battling. And he's battling hard to try and pick off that position. He's going to have to cool it down, though. Might use those tires up here in the early going. Sideways that time off corner number four for the driver out of South Carolina. If Brandon Feeney wants to get around that 0-1, he's going to have to work harder than a cucumber in a women's prison to take that position. Right now, Feeney's sitting into the 10th position. Murdoch is sitting there in 9th. Out front, we talked about it. Now your race leader has put two cars a lap down and he's looking at the 15th place driver. There is the Granny Hips Walkers and Canes, number 13 MA of Joshua Buckley. Buckley gonna swing high. He'll let the race leader of Max Terriel get by. There is Dalton Williamson in a brand new paint scheme here tonight. Is that a highlighter yellow? Number one for Dalton. You can't miss him. So with 33 laps officially in the books here, Ken Allen scraped the wall that time as he came by the uh, stand. There you see the Oscar Meyer, number 81. Uh-oh, Brandon Feeney may have used up that cucumber. So the 38 of Brandon Feeney going to go around. That'll be the first time the caution flag does fly here at the Slinger Speedway. Take a look. What happened to Feeney? He told you he was going to have to work harder than that cucumber, and he got down to the inside, and him and Murdoch just tight-knit racing. Going to send that 38 to the infield there, then the trigger coming out here tonight for the caution. So Feeney got back turned around. Right on board here with Brandon Feeney. Call it a little contact with a solo spin there is what put us under the caution flag. So first caution flag here tonight Coming out here on lap number 35. Max Terrell, Dalton Williamson, Chad Allcares, and Michael Trevarthen is how they are running. Looks like Feeney, Higgins, and Higgins currently. Both Higgins are a lap down. Joshua Buckley did get the lucky dog. He had just gone one lap down to the race leaders, but with the caution flag flying and him not involved in it, he got his position back as they uh, waved him around. The safety car. Ready to go. Green flag back into the air here at Slinger and Max Terriel. You now have Dalton Williamson right there. Williamson got to diamond it off. Get to the inside here possibly. See if he can hold it down there. If he can get to the inside of Max Terriel, he will not. Max will retain the race lead here on lap number 42 to match his car number on that door panel. Dave Bragg trying to pick up a couple spots here on the restart. He's to the inside of the number 21. That is Bill Ross to the outside. Car number 21. Sean Single, where are you going? Oh, Crunch. The Captain Crunch number 11 of Sean Single was on the apron, almost in the fence, 
now finds himself in a battle here as Dave Bragg, a one-time champion here with the series, is lurking to the inside of that O Crunch. Captain Crunch number 11. Contact, Bragg around, headed to the infield. Bragg gonna wind up down on the infield here. Can he get it turned back around before the leaders come? Here come the race leaders, and Bragg gonna go a lap down. Got it pointed into the right direction, but the race leaders have gone around him, and now he'll hope that uh, maybe a caution flag will come out that he's not involved in, because he is the first car one lap down. So Bragg made the contact. Let's watch it back here, see what happened from this point of view. He was battling to the inside of the number 11 of Sean Single, and let's see. Bragg comes up the track just a little bit. There was Sean Single and kept his foot in it for that Jiffy Lube entry, and spun it right back around. So there is your race leader as we come back. Live battle for second, though. Dalton Williamson has faded off the, uh, well, back bumper of the number 42. And now here comes Chad Allcares. The weatherman himself coming to the inside in the Duncan number 17. Halfway home in this one, and it is Max Terriot leading the way. He's led them all. As you see, Chad Allcare is taking that position from Dalton Williamson. So now it's Terrio, Allcares, Williamson, Trevartan, and Victor Valls. There's the number 53. He's been very quiet here tonight for the double V entry. Started in fifth, just running in fifth right now. Maybe trying to save a little bit of those tires here for late in the going. As he tries to save some tire, another one of those... Uh, Canadians, though, having some problems. There's the 31. Still having problems. Caution, lights are on. Caution, lights as Joshua Buckley has been turned around. Chris Oliver down on the infield also. Everybody scrambling to try and get around the stop number 13 MA down here. Take a look. There's Joshua Buckley. Oh, looks like, oh, a couple cars get together. Nowhere for Buckley to go. So that crash actually happened a little bit farther up. Believe that was the Brandon Feeney entry. 52, Chris Oliver right there. Oh, Dave Bragg got sideways. I think Oliver checked up. Feeney, nowhere to go. Ken Allen, nowhere to go. Joshua Buckley just going to get clipped. Right on board here with Joshua Buckley. Buckley tagged as he was trying to get around. So that is what will bring the second caution flag of the evening out here tonight. Get them ready to go back racing here as the iRacing.com pace car. Green flag back out and a little bit of a scattered start there, but it will be Max Terriot coming out on top here it looks. That outside lane did not get going on the restart. Max Terry, Dalton Williamson, now Chad Allcares finds himself back into that third position. He had to work so hard to get around Dalton Williamson before, and now he's going to come to try and do it again. Here he comes down to the inside. And he'll be able to make it work again. Williamson will fall back into third. Sean Single up into the fifth position, but he tagged the wall that time as he came by out of turn four. Look at the number 21, Bill Gross, from the outside to the inside, and now who got tagged in the rear end by the number 62? That was T.J. Henson 
driver out of Carolina that just got to the back end of that number 21. Final stages of this one here tonight. One driver way up uh, the out of the groove there. That was the 38 of Brandon Feeney. Feeney out of the groove battling with Dave Bragg there. That is a battle for position. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Bragg is back on the lead lap. He was actually the lucky dog last. Oh, hold on to her. Bragg drifted up the track and Feeney reacted to it. And Feeney almost found himself into the outside retaining wall. Sean single back under attack. Remember how we told you it was a quiet night for Victor Valls? Well, Victor got passed up on the restart there by Sean single. Now Victor one spot back outside the top five. Max Terriot still conti continuing to lead the way here, but he has the number 17 of Chad Allcares right behind him. Chad all cares has not pitted here tonight. Actually, nobody has come to pit road here. And let me tell you why. You go to pit road, it's on the outside of the speedway. You are guaranteed here tonight to go at least, at least one lap down on your pit stop. So it's just not really in the cards here tonight. It's kind of a run what you brung. How much can you save? And now here comes Chad Allcares to the inside of the 42 down the straightaway to turn one. Chad Allcares is going to poke the nose and oh, a little contact there. All care is going to take the race lead away from the number 42 of Max Terriol. So with All Cares now taking the race lead on lap number 73, the first time we've seen a new race leader. There is contact, though, for that race lead. And take a look at the right front of the Duncan number 17 of Chad All Cares. He now has a little damage. Will that hamper him tonight? One driver, I believe. Oh, having problems here. A couple of them turning around on the front straight away. One driver went flipping down into the corner. I believe that was the 81 there of Ken Allen. As the number one of Dalton Williamson was slow. He was having problems. I believe that's where the uh, kind of contact all started. It looks like the 0-1 of Richard Murdoch having problems. It looks like he is having to go to pit road. So Murdoch's night will end up in pits. Take a look back here. Let's see. This is the replay. What happened to the number one of Dalton Williamson? He had faded back outside the top five. And oh, he got tagged by the 21. Williamson went around and it just blocked the entire outside lane. That was Ken Allen that went over onto his lid. Let's watch this from inside or on top here. I thought we were going inside, but we'll go to the top side here of the 0-1 of Richard Murdoch. Murdoch got tagged from behind, unfortunately, and he got pushed into the wreck. with Ken Allen. Allen was running right behind the 0-1. We saw Murdoch get pushed into the wreck. This is where it happens. Murdoch checked up, and Ken Allen just got right into him, then Chris Oliver into the back, and you saw the 81 go up and over here. So that is what brought out our caution flag here tonight. Take a look at it. It's under 25 laps to go. All cares is the race leader. Will he be able to hang on is going to be the question because there was a little contact there between him and Max Terriel. So will those two be able to play nice the rest of the way as the iRacing.com pace car is off the racing surface. So we're ready to go. Everybody has rejoined here it looks except for Dalton Williamson and Richard Murdoch. Green flag up. Oh, spun the tires. Oh, and now it looks like a couple of them trying to hang it together. TJ Henson going to gather it back up. And we'll see if we stay green. 20 laps to go. TJ Henson having some connection issues here tonight. There's the 62 down to the bottom side. It looks like we're staying green. Max Terriot now falling back to the third position. It's All Cares, it's Travartha, it's Terriot. Single right there in the O Captain Crunch Machine. Under 20 laps to go here tonight at the Slinger Speedway. As we got that short track racing action here for you. Ken Allen has gone to pit road. He looks like he is going to be done here tonight. Caution lights, Brian Bianchi. Caution lights for the number 14 MA sitting up against the outside wall there. 
Richard Murdoch trying to come back out because of the caution, so he will get his machine back out onto the speedway. But oh boy, look at the right front on the 0-1 of Richard Murdoch. Looks like he is going to decide he'll just take it back up the uh, to pit road. What happened to Brian Bianchi? Bianchi, oh, Bianchi got down onto the apron, and him and the 62 got linked together. Look at Rob Higgins thread the needle. I believe we can go back and get an onboard camera here with Rob Higgins. I believe, yes, we do. Look at it right here. Watch Rob Higgins. He is going to thread the needle. Yep. Right through he goes. Couldn't have gotten any closer. So you thought we were going to have an exciting finish. Well, it's going to get even better. The outside lane on these restarts has not got a good start. So it'll be all cares to the inside here of the front row with the number two of Michael Trevartan. The first time he's been on the front row for a restart. Max Terriel is back in third. He'll have an inside advantage. Then it'll be Sean Single there to the outside of row number two. Green flag coming back up. We'll have 12 laps to decide this one. Here they come out of turn four. Green flag back into the air here. Looks like the 21 of Bill Gross will come back out onto the speedway as we take the green flag. Eleven to go, Max Terry. You see, I told you about the outside versus the inside lane. Now that 42 back into second. Can he mount the charge on the number 17? If Max wants to get back around, he's going to have to work harder than that cucumber in the woman's prison that we talked about with Richard Murdoch. No all cares makes a mistake. You can't do that when you're at the end of the race with under 10 laps to go now in front of the number 42. Look at Max Terrell. Got a great shot that time out of turn number two. All care is going to have to work really hard now. Max throwing the cucumber at him. Sam, put that in your Duncan. Seven laps remain. Look at that battle. All cares is hanging it all out on the outside. That momentum able to hold up there. Really impressed with the Slinger Speedway here tonight. At the line, getting six laps to go was Max Terriel by the fender. Contact! Just behind them, Sean Single get into Michael Trevorthan. Here comes Victor Valls. He's going to try and waltz through. They're going to get the high five at the flag stand. It'll be just five laps to go here. That's exactly what Chad Allcares and Max Terriot wanted to see was those drivers get into it back there. It'll be three to go at the line. It's Max Terriot. Caution lights. Caution lights, I'm being told, for the 21 of Bill Gross to the outside there. He will draw a caution flag. Bill currently running back into the 14th position, eight laps down. The officials deemed he was hanging too far out there, so they will throw the caution flag. That's what the caution flag is for. Nobody actually crashing or getting spun around here with just three laps to go. They were coming to get the old popsicle sticks, winding them up, tossing them out for the number 42 of Max Terra, but we will have to wait for that one. So Max did not want to see the caution flag. All cares did not want to see the caution flag. You know who did want to see it, though? Michael Trevorthan. He just made that contact, or he didn't make it. He was involved in it either way, however you want to look at it and call it from your point of view. Him and Sean Single got together, and Mac, or Michael Trevarthan lost those positions back to that fifth spot. So now when we restart, it'll be Max to the inside, Sean Single behind him on the second row inside, and then Michael Trevartan. So we're going to go to overtime, and the gloves are coming off. That I can tell you right now. How hard does all cares push it onto the outside? What about Victor Valls? We talked about it being quiet all night, then he dropped the position, then he got that spot back, and now he is sitting 
here with a chance for a podium finish at the end of this, well, feature event here on a Thursday night, which we got to thank everybody that's tuning in out there all around. Of course, we have a lot of those Richard Murdoch fans out there. We got the Canadian crew tuning in here. You know what we don't have? A Massachusetts New England fan group here. We got the Carolinas. We got the Canadians. No Massachusetts fans. Green flag back up. Green white checker attempt number one coming at us. And that outside lane there of all cares not getting up to song and dance as we went green. This time by though we'll take the white flag. White flag is up. We'll go white flag as we saw one car going around there. That was Michael Trevartan, but it will be Max Terriot coming around here. It'll be Max Terriot picking up the first ever win here tonight at Slinger. So a crazy one at the end of this one. Max Terriot comes across the line first with Sean Single. Chat all cares. What happened to Michael Trevartan here at the end? This is the replay. Oh, Michael got down onto the apron there, washed it up into the quarter panel, and around he went. So that is what happened to the number two of Michael Trevartan at the end of this one. So after 105 laps here, Max Terriel picks up the win. Unofficial results on the left-hand side of your screen here tonight from Slinger. But you know what, race fans? I thought it was an exciting race at Slinger. Don't take my word for it. We're going to talk to the top three here in just a couple of moments. So what do you say? Hang out, hold tight, and we'll be right back here to Slinger with the top finishers here tonight. iRacing is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all around the globe iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics, engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 170,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsports organizations like NASCAR to deliver virtual races based on the real-life NASCAR Cup Series, as well as many other series on the NASCAR ladder. iRacing also features team racing, providing a variety of options for members to create and manage their own teams. Race with friends or real-world teammates in full-length endurance events like the 24 Hours of Daytona, Spa 24, or the Bathurst 12 Hour. Additional partners include IMSA, World of Outlaws, Supercars, and IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own Indianapolis 500, Bathurst 1000, Chili Bowl, and many more iconic events. This is iRacing, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car. Sign up today at iRacing.com. Welcome back here to the Slinger Speedway Race Fans. A little overtime needed here tonight for the checkered flag auto supply short track scrambler series presented by Red Light Racing. All the racing is done. It's in the books here tonight. We saw some contact. We saw some pileups. Very fast, big, couple of them going up and over. But hey, like I said before, don't take my word for it. Let's hear from what some of these top drivers had tonight after all this well, racing going down. What do you say we start P number one here tonight with the number 42 of Max Terriot? Let's see what he has to say. Max, another win for you here with Red Light Racing. This one, though, you had a little contact out there. How did that number 42 find its way back to the front of the field here at the end? Uh, at the end, it felt like the last 10 laps, it just came back to life. I might have used up a little bit too much right front. Uh, the middle part of the race 
But uh, as far as contact goes, I don't think it made any difference uh, on the either the steering or uh, the suspension. So I had probably the best uh, restart the last one, and that counted the most. So uh, yeah, again in Victor Lane, we'll take it. Were you worried at the end when the caution flag came out? You were coming to get the two to go, and then the uh, yellow rag was flying when you came out of turn four? No, restarting on the inside was the important part. Either first or you want to be third late in a race like this, and uh, I happened to be first, so it, it was a tricky restart zone also, right in the middle of three and four, but since we had a few cautions tonight let's just say that like that i got to i got to know pretty much when we restarted and timed it right brand new track here to red light racing in the short track side of things how much testing did you do to get ready for this one-off race yeah we happened to do a uh, recruitment race in, in the preseason. that's the only uh, testing that i have done and yeah, since it's the new, new track, quarter mile, high bank like this, and uh, I, I can't imagine how it is to drive a super late model on this short track with that much momentum and so close racing. It's, I get why some of the best NASCAR drivers come out there like Kenseth and Trickle and a few others that you really need to be consistent, really need to hit your point because they look the same one and two between uh, one and two and three and four they look all the same but it drives very different so that was that was a unique experience for sure well you pick up the win here tonight nobody can ever take that one away from you you're going to extend the points championship lead for yourself headed into next week so what do you say we roll this red carpet out here so you can go test at another well small little bull ring the bull ring next week so red carpet's out microphone is yours hey thanks roger yeah again as uh every week i want to thank my uh, fiance my friend max at maxim knitting and my dad uh to josh and rob for running this uh checkered flag uh short track series on thursday night it's a different it's a change of pace from monday night it's really high high adrenaline for a, a short amount of time but it's very intense like half an hour race but you're around other cars pretty much a whole race so it's 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 intense and uh, yeah as far as the bowling goes uh it's not one of my best short track i i remember from the modified days uh i, I probably need yeah some extra testing if i want to improve there so uh but hey, we'll see you guys next week there you have it. He'll pick up the first ever win here at the Slinger Speedway. Car number 42 of Max Terriot will remember this one in the days to come. The driver that will finish second here tonight, oh, Captain Crunch. It's him out of Ayer, Massachusetts. How about it, Sean Single? You had some fans out there tonight, and, well, you were oh, Captain Crunch everywhere. Yeah, that was a good sponsor, considering I hit everything. But the pace car, because you can't hit the pace car in this, I have a couple apologies out to do to mike victor dave just i could not get a handle on the car the car was all over the place i don't even know how i ended up second but uh happy to be up here talking to you yeah ricky bobby i guess you don't know what to do with your hands out there well tell us about the track you say your car was a little bit all over the place including yourself but what about the track how was it out there how hard was it really to drive this track here tonight it's pretty tough. Turns one and two were a lot different than three and four. I felt like I had a pretty good handle on turns one and two and could get really good runoff, but coming out of four, it felt like I was collecting the wall or just getting super loose and then collecting the wall. So uh, I I didn't even have this track before we jumped in today. I looked at it, I was like, why the hell can't I get into the race? And then I was like, oh, I don't own the track, so I had to buy it before even jumping in here. So what you're saying is your two cents wasn't smart enough to realize you didn't have the track. No, not at all. I, I had no clue. Couldn't figure out what the problem was. And I was like, oh, wait a second. I need to buy the track. Well, you could have contacted uh, James Skelton. He would have been able to tell you that one. But, hey, a great run nonetheless. Short track racing. Rubbing is racing. There's going to be a little contact. And, well, you definitely crunched up a couple of those fenders here tonight. You picked up four spots. So, all in all, at the end of the night, 
those points are going to be looking pretty darn good in the overall points standings for you here. So what do you say, Sean? Uh, what do you got to thank on the side of this beautifully sponsored car here tonight? Yeah, I got to thank my mom and my dad and my sister who typically watching. I believe my aunt and uncle, Steve and uh, Judy, are out there watching as well. So shout out to them. Uh, I'm super excited they all get to watch. I want to thank my th teammates down at Forex Racing. Uh, on the Monday side of things, thank you for setting all this up with the broadcast, and then Josh and Rob for setting up the league. There's just a lot that goes into this, and it, it, we really appreciate everything um, that you guys do for us and in, in putting this together. So thank you all. There it is. He's out of Air, Massachusetts, and he will finish P number two here tonight. Shanika single race fans finishes P2. That leaves one other driver on the podium here tonight, and he had an opportunity to pick up a win here at Slinger. Chad, a little bit of a late race. Uh, Yellow kind of put the damper on that. One mistake, slip up under 10 to go. What did you need to hang on to this one here tonight? I needed to go green pretty much the whole way because, um, yeah, I cannot restart for the life of me. I was actually joking about it in the K5 Discord, the, the Nibon 5 Discord. Um, I I might be the worst restart or in, at my I rating and like a 3K I rating and I'm always losing spots and restarts. But um, yeah, I just need to go green because I, I'd figure out a rhythm and I think I was protecting the right front more than everybody else was uh, by pitching it a little bit and waiting on the gas a little bit longer. But uh, once we hit the yellows, I, I struggle with timing that green and I'm waiting for the green. I'm not anticipating it. So I'm like just a few milliseconds, nanoseconds behind the other guys when they get on the gas and they get kind of jump on me. And that last restart, I looked at my replay. I'm like, man, what am I doing so far behind and high? I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> well, it was definitely a good run. Did you think coming into this track here tonight, you were going to have the opportunity to run towards the front with some of these drivers that have been running these cars for such a long time here on Thursday? I um actually thought we were doing SK Bullring. Um, I wasn't paying too close attention and I jumped into the session. I'm like, wait, this is this is Slinger. But um, even though I haven't run these guys uh, on Thursdays, I have run a lot of late model stock. I've actually run a full season with it, and there's a there, it has so much grip, and it has so much grip that you can drive it so hard that you'll just fry your right front. And so I think the experience of driving this in longer races. Um, putting more wear on the right rear, um, knowing to kind of hang and, and stay off the um, the gas just a tick longer to make it last longer. Now, when we get into the sprinting, I, that's what I struggle, and that's kind of what showed in the last 10 laps there. Well, it definitely was a good run here tonight. What do you think, though, we're going to head to a more traditional track, something that you probably have a lot more experience, the bull ring in Las Vegas? I'm excited about that one because... Uh, the SK Modified and the Bullring is actually a, a track I just enjoy running. Um, I've never run it in Elite, but it would, it, it, it just with this group of guys, they're just so good at these short tracks. I mean, we ran so long under green. I, I don't catch um, those two if we don't run 30, 40 laps and allow us to kind of settle into a groove. And that's a, that's a testament to everybody in this league. This is an amazing league. I was telling my uh, my buddies in the Discord, I'm like, I'm going to do Slinger, and they're like, Wow, Slinger, gee, that's gonna be crazy. I'm like, I think this group can pull it off, and they did. So, I'm looking forward to Bull Ring. I think this group can pull it off with the SK mod. The SK mod has had an update with the damage model and also the um, the contact, so you can actually race closer with that SK mod. And uh, side to side contact won't just throw you into the wall. You can actually bump off each other a little bit and stuff like that. So. I think it's going to be a pretty good race. Well, we look forward to seeing you next week. Before we let you go, though, is there anybody there on the iRacing side in that Discord or, well, anybody in general that you got to give the uh, thank yous to to make this car uh, as fast as it is? I just enjoy the K5 uh, Discord. It's the Nibon 5. Um, he runs a YouTube, and we kind of have a community in there, and we kind of talk through stuff and uh, kind of – it's not, not necessarily a team, but we we say how our races go, and we, we share ideas. My wife, obviously, she's – uh, supports this in letting me do it and not necessarily complaining. Uh, I don't think she watches, but if she did, thank. Hi, Julie. Thank you. Um, but she's out. I think she's going to eat with one of her friends. And then uh, my 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 stepson Paxton just uh, he's always checking in on me and saying, 
you winning, Dad? And I'm like, uh, I'm actually 30th, but out of how many? 40. Doing good, buddy. Keep it up. So, yeah, dude, uh, shout out to, <laughs> to my family here. Well, there you have it here tonight. Your top three podium finishers, Max Terrell, Sean Singrel, and you just heard from Chad Allcares here tonight. A good run for all these drivers here at one of the toughest tracks that we will head to this season. It's a one-fourth high-banked mile track, and let me tell you, it put on some side-by-side -side racing. Next week when we head to the, well, just the small boring at Las Vegas, that one's going to be exciting. Taking the fenders off, bringing back the open wheel modifieds for these drivers in the Barbaki 100 at the Bull Ring. That is one week from now on April the 18th. Before we head then to the Nashville Fairgrounds, I was just there this past weekend. I can tell you there was no racing going on, but I can tell you I was there. That's going to be on April the 25th, though, when we put the fenders back on and bring the super late models back out. So those are the next two races here on a Thursday night coming up for these drivers. Will Max Terriel be able to extend his championship lead in the races to come? Or will some drivers like Michael Trevarth and Dave Bragg, maybe Chad Allcares, can close the gap on Max Terriel? But that's going to about do it here from the Slinger Speedway. So for everybody at the Checker Flag Auto Supply, everybody at Red Light Racing, and all of us here at the Turn 3 Racing Network, we hope you enjoyed tonight's virtual show here from the Slinger Speedway. And until we catch you next time, race fans, Everybody stay safe, and we'll see you in turn three.